Um, hello everybody and good evening. So my name is Anna Grealish and I am the Women in Sport Lead for Athletics Island. Um, and this evening uh, you're joining us for a webinar about Let's Talk Periods. This is a campaign that I'm pulling through Athletics Island around being period supportive in clubs, helping coaches, helping parents, helping athletes have that conversation around, around periods. I suppose the idea really came from some coaches I'd been talking to um, and they wanted to know just how to start that conversation, what to talk about, what was appropriate, um, some tips and tools to help them to have that conversation. And what we wanted to do was split it into two. So this evening is the men's one. Uh, so men, um, men, let's have that period conversation. I'm delighted to be joined by Ellie Loftus this evening, who's going to deliver for us. Um, Ellie is based in Galway and uh, Galway City Harrier. She'll introduce herself uh, when she starts a talk, but delighted to have Ellie on this evening. Um, as well, we're going to do uh, a few more campaigns around this. One is going to be on reds, so Ellie's not going to touch on, on that subject, but one will be on reds. And the second one then after Christmas is going to be on menopause as well. So there's going to be a few different areas that we're going to look at in terms of female health. But this one I think is really, really impactful and really, really um, needed is around that let's talk, that let's talk periods piece. Um, if anyone has any questions uh, throughout, you can pop it in the chat at the bottom and we can ask Ellie the ones at the end. Um, or if you, if you feel happy to unmute yourself at the end of the conversation, again, you can ask Ellie directly any questions. Um, OK, Ellie, so I'm going to pass over to you. Um, I know you're going to share your screen and talk us through um, your, your presentation. Hi, everyone. You're all very welcome. Um, to this webinar. I'm delighted to be here to speak um, on this very important topic. Let's talk periods. Um, as we know, periods is just one part of the menstrual cycle. It's not at all. So I'm going to touch a little bit on puberty because I know what an awful lot of you have very young athletes. Um, and it's a very, very important topic. It's not something that we all feel comfortable talking about. I'm delighted. This, so excuse me, my voice has been misfiring all day today, but I'm delighted that so many men are here because you're so important in this conversation and so important to really make an athlete uh, comfortable about talking about it and about the physical and emotional environment where periods kind of take place. Just a little bit about me. I'm Ellie Loftus. I'm a general nurse by background. I have uh, postgraduates in pediatrics and intensive care. I have a master of science from UCD in health. I am qualified in child and adolescent health screening, and I'm a barrister in my spare time. And then I'm the founder of a small Irish company called Nikki's, and that really came from the fact that I'm a mom to two girls. And I really was taken aback that things really hadn't changed in the last, like even 50 years in relation to solutions for periods. It was still the same kind of approach, and it was all problems loss of girls from sport and I really wanted to tackle that because I wanted things to be different for my daughter than was for me. I grew up in a family of four boys and I had no sisters. So it wasn't really the time um, that moms or um, teachers or even coaches, anybody spoke about periods. So I kind of did it all on my own, like my friends, like um, society really in Ireland and in the world at large. And um, I just wanted that to be different. So I started about creating uh, period underwear, period sports shorts and uh, period swimwear to keep girls in sport. I felt very strongly about it. I wanted things to be different. So that's kind of the background to Nikki's. And I use very much my advocacy skills and, uh, as a barrister to be an advocate for girls um, and for women to make periods better and more comfortable and break down the taboos. So I'm just trying to go to the next slide. Mm, that's weird. Oh, yeah, sorry. So just to set the scene a little bit, um, I just want to kind of why why are we here? Then why are we talking about this? And why is Athletics Ireland, you know, getting really behind this and Anna getting really behind this? Is because if we take this little snapshot in time, this is a plan international study and it looked at it surveyed 1,100 Irish girls between the ages of 12 and uh, 12 and 19 years of age a lot of the girls that you would actually be coaching and they were surveyed on period stigma and how they felt about their periods and obviously maybe a bit about the change in bodies as well. And over 55% said they were embarrassed by their period. Now, as coaches and as parents, as teachers and everyone else, we aren't doing a particularly good job if this day and age that 55% of our girls still feel very embarrassed about their period. 61% have said they've missed school. So we know that it's having a huge impact on education and one in five girls drop out of sport between primary and secondary school. And we know that, we know that we lose girls around puberty 
you know, you might have great attendance in that maybe 12, 13, and then 14, 15 start to dwindle off. And by the time we get to senior, we've lost an awful lot of girls. And then 88% felt that we were less able to pay attention during this time. So we took this a little bit further within the keys and we looked at the day in the life of a teen just to give you an idea about what girls um, are saying about their periods. And we talked to their moms and to, to the, the young teen girls. Some talked about it being so painful and we'll talk about that a little while about period pain and how that will impact on performance, how that will impact on participation, impact on your athletes in general. Another one said, I would like to feel normal on my period. And what that means is she doesn't feel normal on her period, but feels normal every other time. I don't want to play sport in my period. I'm too afraid of leaks coming through my clothes. A lot of young girls will describe, they use this term called social suicide, where if, if, they, if they bleed through, you know, they have a leak or a period leak or something like that, they're standing on a start line, they're starting at, start, they're starting, standing at the start of a long jump or a high jump, about to throw the shot, whatever. And instead of concentrating on the sport ahead of them, they're afraid that this leak is going to come through their shorts. I'm scared when I stand up at school and feel that gush of blood. I'm so afraid of coming through my clothes. Again, that fear of leaks when you should be kind of happy-go-lucky in those years. I know it's not a big deal, but I just don't want people to know that I have my period. To me, it's private. And we'll talk about this in a little while when we're talking about, you know, different things that we can do as coaches to make that physical and emotional environment comfortable for girls having their period. And as a mom, it is your job to protect your child and protecting them in this most vulnerable time in their life is so important to me. So what's interesting about that comment is that the perception of the mother is that her child is going through the most vulnerable time when she's actually having her period. So that's the impact in the day in the life of a child or a teen in relation to their periods. So what is a period? So I'm going to be a little bit cheeky here. Um, we know we kind of generally know what it is. But it's actually part of the menstrual cycle. It's the first usually five days of a menstrual cycle. So it's not the menstrual cycle. It's part of it. It's a wonderful sign of health. It's kind of pretty much the green kite mark of health. Having normal periods is a great sign of health. And that's a very important um, a part that we're kind of getting across here tonight. But I'll talk about that in a little while. No, it's a normal bodily function and none of us would actually be here without periods. Uh, humans would cease to exist. So that's how important it is. And from a coach's perspective, that's what we need to be thinking about, that we don't want to do anything that impacts negatively on a girl's period or a menstrual cycle. So what is a period? So it's basically the shedding of the functional layer of the uterus. We all know that what has happened is ovulation has taken place. The egg hasn't been fertilized and therefore we shed the lining of the uterus. That is all it is, is a physiological function. It occurs every 28 days, but the, it can range anything from 21 to 45 days and it has a meal, mean cycle of about 32.2 days. Most menstrual cycles last about three to seven days, and but a period that lasts long, the 10 days or longer is not normal. And we're gonna talk about things that's normal and not normal. And it just kind of helps us to have that understanding with our athletes, that when we're talking to them or if a conversation comes up about periods, we know what's normal and we know what's not normal as well. So taking us back a little step from periods. So obviously you're, you know, you have young girls, you have young athletes, and we just kind of look at the signs of puberty. So breast budding typically occurs after the age of eight years of age. We wouldn't expect it before that. It's followed by pubic hair development. Then we have the growth spurt. So the, what's very important here is girls will only grow for two years after the onset of their period or what we call minarch. It, uh, boys will grow until they're 18, but girls will only grow for two years. So we need to be very realistic about uh, girls' development in sport. They will grow for only two years. So, and finally, the onset of men menarche, typically two to three years after the bre breast budding. And that's the signs of puberty. And that's a girl transitioning through puberty and the body changes. So what's normal? Typically between, um, they'll get their period somewhere between the ages of 10 and 16. Uh, funny enough, in 1840s, the average age was 17, um, but in, by the year 2000, it was 12. Now, we are seeing girls getting periods younger than, than that um, more frequently, and we think it's probably chemicals, maybe plastics in the water, maybe a higher body ma mass index. The average age is 12.4 years. It tends to be painless and occurs without warning. And that's what's important as well. You can imagine sometimes, you know, on average, you're going to have your girls down at the training sessions or you might have 
them up in AIT or in Abbottstown and they're going to get their first period. There's going to be no warning. They can get it while they're with you um, at an event. So we need to be aware of that, that they're the ages in which they can get their periods and then get them without warning. And the first cycles are varied in length and they're varied in flow, even though we are seeing a little bit of kind of heavier periods in younger girls than we used to. So what to expect? So by the age of 15 years of age, approximately 98% of girls will have undergone menarche, signaling the maturation of the adolescent female body. Now, what's also important to remember here, it's the body, it's the physical body that's maturing. However, the 12, 13 year old girl is still that young 12, 13 year old girl that you had yesterday at training, last week at training, and emotionally, she's still very much a child. So we don't treat them any differently. Frequently, the periods are irregular for the first while, and that's kind of why it's hard to it's hard to you know predict when they're going to get their period, especially in the first few years. It can come maybe every 20 days or it can range out to 45 days. So it's very unpredictable for these young girls. But by the third year after the onset of the period, 60 to 70 percent of girls will have regular cycles of 21 to 34 days. And that's very typical of this adult female body. So what is a normal? So this is what we want to try and avoid. We, we, you know, we girls not get the period at all. So we don't want to do anything like overtraining or anything like that that will impact on a girl's period. So amenorrhea is what we call an absence of normal periods. And where we might see that is where we see a complete absence of menstruation by 15 years of age. The girl still hasn't got her period, but she has normal growth. So she's had her growth spurt and she has the development of secondary sexual development. And what that means, we have the breast budding, the breast development, and we have the, the pubic hair, for example. And, and then we see no periods or we might see an absence of a period by age 13. She hasn't grown, had her normal growth spurt and she hasn't any development of sexual development characteristics. So then secondary amenorrhea is another thing that we might see in sport. We see a bit of overtraining and I know you're going to be getting a, um, a webinar on uh, red. So I'm going to not get into that in any depth. So secondary amenorrhea is an absence of a period for greater than three cycle intervals or six consecutive months in previous uh, girl that has been menstruating normally. So what isn't normal either? So we wouldn't want to see um, a, a, it's abnormal for any period to appear before the secondary sexual development of a girl before the breast budding. We would be concerned and like you're in a place where you're interacting with a lot of young girls and you may get disclosures of different things. And one of them that you'll be watching out for is obviously um, any abuse. Maybe they might come to you as their coach. So we would be concerned about genital trauma. We would be concerned about tumors, bleeding disorders or sexual abuse. If a girl is getting bleeding from the vagina before she has actually got her period. And Minarch is also considered delayed if more than three years lapse between the onset of the breast budding and the first menses. So that's kind of what is normal. We would have specific concerns medically also around a girl that gets her period before 10 years of age or if she gets her period late and that's at or later than 15 years of age. And both of those have future adverse physical and psychological poor outcomes um, later on. So late menarch, um, so generally we do see that um, girls that have intense exercise of maybe greater than two hours per day, they tend to go into puberty and menarch later. And we need to be cognizant of that. Uh, as I was saying earlier, we don't want to do anything that affects our girls and their menarch because periods are so important to their development and um, to fertility later on and all those things. So we want to not do anything that would cause any difficulty for them. So that we do see menarch um, happening later in girls that would have intense exercise. And especially with the challenges of girls, you wouldn't necessarily be overtraining your athlete, but with, with so many different sports, there might be a camogie one day, football another day, soccer another day, and then they're doing their athletics two, three times a week. And then it's just that that's when the too much exercise has taken place that can affect their puberty and their first menses. So it's estimated that a minimum body fat of 17% is necessary for a girl to get her first period and 22% of body fat is required for maintaining menses. So I'm not going to go too much, as I say, into that because that's going to be addressed in the REDS webinar that you're going to get. So what can impact our athletes uh, when they're down for training or they're competing or you have a high performance athlete? What it, so period pain is one of the big banes of, of girls' lives and women's lives. So we don't really know why some girls suffer pretty badly from it and some don't get a period pain. Like I never got a period pain in my life until I went away from home for the very first time. 
And um, that was it. I never I wouldn't even have known what it was about. But some will. It's totally debilitating. They're missing school. They're missing training and they're dropping out of sport because of it. The reason their period pain is caused is caused by the muscular wall. Basically, you're shedding that lining that we're telling you about and your uterus contracts and it to shed the lining. And when it contracts it, um, it compresses down on the blood vessels and that temporarily cuts off the blood supply to the uterus. And that triggers what we call uh, pain chemicals called prostaglandins. <clears throat> so how do we treat period pains? This is useful for, you know, you as a coach, you might be caught away somewhere, um, a trip away or up on AIT or whatever. <clears throat> so heat packs. Now, the only thing I would say is that, you know, if you're putting together a pack, a period pack or a period kit, the, the, uh, this is the barrister, I guess, coming out of me a little bit. But, you know, the risks of period with uh, heat packs is that they, you know, somebody will use it incorrectly and burn themselves. So I don't tend to recommend them putting into packs but certainly at home there are great anything warm around the uterus really helps to to relax those those muscles is contracting and helped to relax the muscles of the uterus a warm bath or shower massage and that's great if a girl is kind of caught out and you have no access to pain relief say for example massaging the abdomen getting them to self-massage their abdomen in a circular motion really helps now it won't get rid of the cramps completely but it certainly will reduce the pain and um, then pain relief like Panadol and Nurofen. Nurofen in particular is very, very good. It's because it works very directly as an anti-inflammatory on those prostaglandins that cause the pain that I was telling you about in the previous slide. And if they aren't controlling pain, we're a little bit more concerned where we kind of, you know, your normal Panadol and your Nurofen isn't controlling the pain. Then it's, you need to speak, get your athlete or whatever, speak to their GP. They might be put on um, pain relief like Ponston or Caral. The only thing I would say is sometimes they get quite drowsy, you know, with those. So if you're looking for high performance or they're looking to compete, they can make them a little bit drowsy. And then another drug that kind of like I'm not a big fan of, like telling them to run off to get drugs to their GP or anything. But sometimes pain is that debilitating and it's causing them to miss out on their sport. But cycloprin is another drug that's used to lighten heavy periods. It's not pain relief. And um, it works to kind of, the, the, the flow becomes an awful lot less and they might have a little bit less pain because of it. Like we've seen girls to go on to end up needing uh, blood transfusions because their hemoglobin has dropped off that much from having very heavy periods. So that's how debilitating heavy periods can be. And then for very bad pain, they used to prescribe maybe sometimes from time to time tramadol, but that's prohibited in your list uh, in competition since the 1st of January, 2024. And I know like for high performance athletes, you need to be very aware of that. And then exercise. And I know that your athletes, the last thing sometimes they feel like as a female is um, exercising when you have bad period pain, but it does release the happy hormones. So it's a very good reason to tell them to continue on with their sport and release the happy hormones, as I say, such as serotonin and your endorphins. And they really help to ease period cramps. It's like going for that, you know, that recovery run after you've done intensive exercise, it really helps. So getting on to that heavy periods, another reason why you will lose athletes or why they'll be impacted when they're down with training for you or they're, they're off in, as I say, AIT, Abbottstown, up in Tullamore or whatever. So about 10 and out of every 100 women have heavy periods. That's quite a big statistic. Heavy periods can lead to iron deficiency, and that's a big problem if you're looking for your athlete to perform well. If they're anemic, they're obviously not going to perform very well. And what do we do like hormone therapy? What we're talking about that is you're, you're, you're putting them on the pill and then painkillers and medication to reduce the bleeding, as I was telling you in the previous slide. The total amount of blood loss during one period is usually about 60 mil. So it's, an awful not, it's not an awful lot, but a heavy period is a lot different. They lose more than 80 mils of blood during one menstrual cycle. And that mightn't seem like a lot to you, but it's actually a lot when you're doing that every single month. Um, and how you would know that is that a girl is regularly needing to change her pad maybe every one to two hours or change a tampon. And she's feeling weak, she's feeling tired and she's sluggish and it has a huge impact. Now, something that I'm very passionate about and I was talking about the advocacy role that I do and uh, that I do an awful lot around this. Um, is our girls with, you know, that have maybe intellectual or physical disabilities. They have particular challenges when it comes to periods and we want to be inclusive of everybody. So examples that I would give you is that girls say, for example, with autism, they might have executive functioning difficulties. And what that means is that they wouldn't necessarily know uh, to if they got their period to go to their bag to take out uh, a pad take off the back of it stick the sticky side down pull up their underwear or know how to go through the stages of changing it 
um, and they you, they can have very difficult difficulties with sensitivities, like they wouldn't like the feel of a of a pad. They, they actually say that they can physically hear it moving, so they would have difficulty with maybe with the you know the sides of it, the plastic in it, or whatever else. And girls say for it that I work very closely with their moms and dads with say for a Down syndrome, they would have you know maybe fear of blood because every other time that they've actually seen blood, it's been like a cut or an injury, and they can't really process where this blood is coming from and that they have to go through this um you know every month for 30 to 40 years of their lives so traditional period products aren't very inclusive of these girls and that is one of the reasons why i work very closely with these families uh kitting out the girls that they have their dignity and their independence and they're not dependent on somebody taking them to the bathroom and changing their pad and all of those dignity issues that we would have that we kit them out with the period underwear and that they're they're able to leave them on and come home to their mom and dad um after the training session or after school so periods in sport and the reason why we're here. So I know as a coach that we want black and white answers and we want to know, yeah, I want to know now how a period is going to impact my athlete and I want it to be black and white. Well, unfortunately, it's an area that doesn't kind of work that way. So we have to look at the whole person. We look at our whole athlete. We look at them as an individual. What affects one of them is not going to affect another. Regular periods are a very positive sign of health. So we can be delighted and basically in celebration of our athlete when they have regular periods. Periods impact every single female differently. Uh, we really need to make sure that we have the physical environment is right for periods. And what I mean by that is being prepared as a coach, making sure that at our clubs, we have a period kit, emergency period kit. You might never have to stock that up. You know, you can make it up yourself, which some clubs have done. And we provide them in Nikki's as well, that we provide a fully uh, full kit it's waterproof, et cetera, et cetera. But as I say, you can make them up yourself. But the important point is making sure that you have that, that the girls have access to inclusive products like period um, underwear. They have the pads, the tampons, wipes, um, uh, hand sanitizers, disposable bags, uh, eco-friendly, all that type of stuff. Um, a bag that you can kind of take to up to Athlone or up to Abbottstown, up to Tullamore, and that you can have it there. And it's discreet as well that, you know, and we, we do a little inner pack that you can lift out very easily. The girl can run to the bathroom and that nobody will actually know. It actually just looks like a makeup bag. So nobody knows any different. So it's very discreet, especially for younger girls who don't want anyone to know they have their period. We also want to make sure that the mental and emotional environment is right for a girl. So how do we do that? We do that by being very open about periods from the very start, from very young. And I'll talk about that in a little while. And I know as coaches, like we want to know how does this, how does periods impact my athlete? Well, we have this kind of dilemma. We have perceived performance versus objective performance. Perceived performance is how do I feel as an athlete? I'm telling you as my coach, my period, we, I'm really affected by my period on three days coming up to it. Or another athlete might say to you, well, I'm really affected during my five days of my period or the first three days of it. That's my perceived performance. And you might say to me as my coach, well, actually you were 0.1% fat or one, one um, second faster in that, in that particular race. And that's my objective performance. So that's kind of the dilemma. And if you look here at this slide, you can see that women have and girls have very important hormones circulating in their bloodstream and in their bodies all in one go. We have estrogen, which is that blue line here. And you can see in the earlier part of the cycle, it's low early follicular stages when you have your period, say the first five days, but you can see the estrogen, it rises and then it drops off and then it drops off further coming up to our period. Then we have this red line, which is our progesterone and it's low for the first half of the cycle and then it rises up kind of, uh, uh, you know, from some of the research, it would show that we're more likely to injure during that, that progesterone phase. Um, but the, you know, the, the, there's an awful lot more science and research that has to take place. And then we have all these other great hormones, follicle stimulating hormone, which we call FSH, uh, LH, which is a luteinizing hormone. And we have all these flying around. So going back just to perceived versus objective performance. So Studies uh, consistently report that females on the perceived side, uh, female athletes identify that their performance is relatively worse during the early follicular stage. That's day one to five. That's when they're actually having their period and the late luteal phase, which is day 23, 24 to day 28. And that's the days coming up to their period. But the objective performance, um, when you look at the studies using anaerobic and aerobic tests, 
they do not report any clear or consistent effects on the impact of menstrual cycles. So basically the moral of the story is that we take the athlete that's on front of us. So if you wanted to kind of like, you wanted to drill down a little bit further on that and you were looking at about how does a period affect my athlete? Well, what you would do is like, there's loads of tracking apps out there and you would get them to track their period and you would be asking them like how they feel themselves and different things like, are they hungrier or are they taking longer to recover or whatever it is? And then you would actually be looking at the objective and you'd be looking how they train, you know, did you have to adjust any training sessions or whatever else? And that's how you would do it. That's how you would deal with that perceived versus objective performance. Just a little bit about the menstrual cycle. So for, you know, um, some of us, some women don't actually, we, we don't even know ourselves, you know, or don't understand our menstrual cycle very well. Well, the first day of our period is actually the first day of the mental cycle is actually day one when you get your period. That's when you count day one from. And so let's say this this lady here is marking our calendar. So day tw that the 12th of the month is actually the first day of our period and she's counting our five days. So that's day one, day two, day three, day four, day five of our period. And you continue on and so forth. And if she had a 28 day cycle, you're counting 28 days from the 12th of the month. And that that's how um, a cycle is recorded, say, on a basic calendar or how the female body kind of works. So I'm not going to go in too much into this. You're absolute experts as coaches on nutrition and it doesn't really change. You just need to make sure that they're eating very well. And there's lots of other things like which they're going to get anyway. Lots of fresh air, get lots of exercise, keeping communication open and all the good nutrition that they would get, which is very important for period, period and female health in general. So on to how do we help? So we 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 need to kind of start. It's very difficult because we're still at that point where periods are still very taboo and even women are not very comfortable. You know, a lot of the time the subjects we have come a bit, but we haven't come uh, far enough when we look at 55 percent of girls still describing to this day that they're embarrassed by their period. So we need to normalize the conversation. Uh, you, we as coaches need to be comfortable on the topic ourselves. And I hope that up to now, the few bits of slides that we gave you there gives you a little bit more comfort to, to understand the menstrual cycle and understand periods in itself. Uh, use ma very matter of fact language, discuss menstruation as a normal part of an athlete's health, no different to any other physical aspect. Use direct terms like, you know, how sometimes, you know, we can say, oh, the time of the month or something like that. Well, you know, just use periods or menstruation or whatever word you feel comfortable with. But let's kind of stick to the direct terms. Mention it regularly and uh, not something that you bring it up in an emer private or in emergencies. So you would just kind of generally speak about it. You'd be talking about recovery, you'd be talking about exercise. Just mention it. Just be as normal as you can about it. It gives a great message, particularly to young girls. Foster open communication, we all know that they that they can really, your athlete can come to you about anything, and this is no different. If a girl comes to you about her period and she says, I'm after getting my period and I don't have any period product, what will I do? Or I have really bad period pain, what will I do? Keep your facial expression neutral. Don't like look and go, oh my God, what am I going to do with this? Reassure that periods are normal and really healthy. That's a really important message to get across to girls. Ensure privacy and discretion. While it's important to normalize the topic, also allow your athlete to speak to you in private. Not everybody wants to, you know, speak about it public. Not, not everybody feels comfortable speaking in front of other athletes or coaches or whatever else. So just, just if they want to speak to you normally or privately about it, that's absolutely fine. Uh, ensure teens understand how periods can impact their energy and hydration. And that's a great way of bringing it up. You're talking about now, make sure you hydrate and nutrition and make sure that you're looking after yourself during, you know, your, during your menstrual cycle and, and before, uh, you know, it does it impact your performance You can come to me about that or whatever. Share personal stories, obviously, as the male coaches, that's very difficult to do, but you, you might have some anecdotal stories yourself about your, your wife or whatever else. Uh, my poor suffering husband has two, uh, a wife, two, uh, two daughters, and he has uh, a female dog. And now he has period underwear and everything else here in the house as well. So he's got actually very comfortable with, on, on the topic at this stage. But, um, but it's a good way to start a conversation on periods. Acknowledge period related symptoms. Understand the symptoms like cramps, fatigue, heavy periods or bloating can affect uh, perceived, which is your athlete is feeling that and, and describing that to you or what you're observing as your objective performance. Avoid, avoid downplaying or ignoring athletes' complaints. That's really important. 
um, and then modify the athlete session if needed. Um, you might even you might even say something to you, but you know something is off in the warm up or whatever, or in the reps, and maybe reducing the intensity and not being a slave to the plan, not going oh well this is our plan for this training session and we're going to stick to it no matter what. You all know that that we'd modify that athlete session, and sometimes it's just easier to talk to a female coach, and that's okay. It's okay if your athlete doesn't want to come to you because you're a man. You know, that is absolutely fine. Don't feel bad about that. So having so the practical sport, having menstrual um, having period packs that are inclusive of everyone. And we've talked about that. That shows that you're prepared no matter what happens to your athlete and that you're supportive. And even like a good way of even bringing up the topic of uh, periods is as a male coach saying, actually, we have a period pack over there um, and it's in the shed or whatever else. And, you know, or, or you're up in AIT and you say there there's a pack for periods or you explain to them beforehand or you send an email out to the parents telling them if you feel that the parents are going to be more comfortable saying there's actually period packs uh, there's a period pack and they can take it to the bathroom or whatever way you want it to bring it up there's lots of different ways like that discuss hydration nutrition recovery within the context of periods great way to normalize our periods and we talked about that and recognize different experiences park the research nothing is better than that to inform you about what way to address something than the athlete that's in front of you or how to deal with period than the athlete that's in front of you avoid making general assumptions um, some girls will be impacted hugely by their period and some won't some will well some months and some won't some might have a particular bad period this month and then they might actually be fine for the next 11 months so see the athlete holistically and i don't have to preach that to any of you involve period parents if the athlete's okay about this but of course that's age dependent i mean obviously if the girl is older you won't necessarily need to be talking to to the parents so management of periods so a lot of girls would um athletes would describe to us in particular that they don't want to wear tampons so tampons isn't the be all and end all especially for young girls most of them don't actually use them and they may feel the parents or themselves might feel too young and there can be a little bit fiddly for example i gave a talk uh, to ty students recently and uh, i was amazed when we kind of got drilled down into it very little of the ty students were actually using tampons which i was surprised in in this day and age i thought that there would be they describe pa pads in particular when they're doing their sport they crunch up and they're or they, that they can leak out the side of them so they're not the they're not sometimes the the solution either uh, periods being heavy is a big issue for them not having access to changing facilities which is a big issue and uh, no time to change a pad or tampon that they mightn't feel comfortable going to the bathroom and changing a pad or tampon while they're in the middle of a training session and you can imagine up in AIT as well the race is coming the warm-up is coming especially when they're young and they're trying to manage even their time even getting to a bathroom or even have the wear but all to go and change a pad and tampon so we need to kind of be aware of that and they're worried about leaking so they're standing you've done all the preparation and the training in the world the recovery has been great nutrition is great and everything's going so well and then they get their period the morning of a competition and that one percent advantage that you might be trying to train for especially in high uh or your you know in your elite or your high performance athletes and then their period comes and next minute they're standing on a on a, on a start line or about to take their long jump or a cross-country race and they're worried about leaking um and that is a reality for girls so period product choices so we talked about period underwear they're absorbent and they're leak proof you wouldn't, you know, this is a relatively new concept to Ireland in general. Uh, they, you don't have to wear any other period product with them. So they're, they're great for younger girls in particular. And um, they can wear them with a period product if they feel more comfortable. They're great for addressing the fear of leaks and they're reusable and they're environmentally friendly. And then the period pads, there's different absorbencies. And that's important for a period kit to have different absorbencies because not one if everyone is different and the flows are different, so you need to have different absorbencies. Same with tampons, but you might find, as I was saying there to you earlier, young teens might not wear a tampon and they might have the, the wear but all to kind of open it. And sometimes, you know, you see that string hanging out the bottom of a tampon. Some of them actually don't know that you pull that string down. So lots of kind of misfires with younger teens and that might be why they're not wearing them. And then there's obviously that the, I've never seen toxic shock syndrome happen, but it is a risk with uh, tampons. And then there's such thing as menstrual cups and they would be very fiddly for younger girls. It kind of be something that an older, you know, an older, maybe 20 something would start to use and they're very environmentally friendly. 
And that's what period underwear and period sport shorts look like. You can see they just look like normal underwear. The sport shorts over down on the bottom left just are based on those Nike pros that you see. So they just look like normal shorts and they're very discreet and no one no one knows that they're anything different. And it's great for, the, as I say, the younger athletes or the athletes with special needs or for anyone in general. And then just what should be included in a period kit? Well, period underwear for females, as I said, where traditional period products are not suitable. Have your period pads with different absorbencies, tampons with different absorbencies, hand sanitizer, compressed towels, wipes, compostable bags. That's like if you're if they're not somewhere that they can get rid, you know, that they, they, they change a tampon or pad or they may have, you know, blood stained underwear, or whatever else, and they want to put it somewhere, they can have the, you know, the compostable bags for that. The hygiene bags that's transfer, you know, that's easy to pick up as you as a coach to bring to um, an event somewhere um, that's waterproof, obviously, and no period, uh, no period logos on them. So it just is very discreet. And that's very important with young girls. They will not pick up a bag that um, is very obviously a period bag. And then. The, you have different absorbencies. I didn't say that about the period underwear. There's different absorbencies within that. And it's very important. Like you can get cheap period underwear, but I would stay away from that. Um, you know, not all are made equally. You don't want somebody bleeding through, trusting something and then bleeding through it. We only do really the super absorbent styles. And uh, no matter how heavy their period is, it can deal with that. And that's what I felt was important for my daughters. So then again, we do like, for example, we do individual kits as well. We do ones that they can actually all have each and put into their little sports bag or whatever else. And it kind of gives a bit of responsibility back to the parents, because sometimes we take on too much responsibility as coaches. We take on too much responsibility as coach as coaches and as clubs. So it's to kind of put it back on the parents a bit have your daughter you know have a kit in your daughter's bag have her emergency kit so she has access to period uh, pads tampons wipes uh, period underwear whatever that you need to have in the kit as well so the key takeaway messages is um be as comfortable and confident on the topic of periods as you can and you know that's not always easy it's not always easy as uh, as a male because obviously you don't get periods but you do have you know we, we might have wives sisters moms or whatever else and, you know, we have seen them and we do, I suppose, relatively understand them. But just to be a little bit, you know, be as knowledgeable as you can about it and be as comfortable on the topic as you can. Making sure that the physical environment that you're prepared to have emergency period kits, uh, encourage the parents to have a kit in their daughter's bag. Um, you know, that you're not taking all the responsibility as a coach or as a club and the emotional environment. Be as normal about periods as you can. You're going to help hugely if you can normalize it especially for this generation coming up, uh, be, you know, that they feel comfortable, they feel safe, they feel it's kind of open, it's no big deal, they can come to you about anything, uh, that neutral facial expression that you don't look like, with, you know, that you don't look like, going, oh my God, no, sorry, I can't really deal with this, and be in control of the situation. A young girl is going to be looking at you, with, uh, up at you for the answers when something has gone wrong, or they haven't a period product, or whatever else, and they're going, what will I do, or, you know, and you're going to have to be able to deal with that situation as comfortably as you can. And these are all the ways to contact um, me, um, I am happy to answer any questions and give you any help that you need in relation to periods. I think it's an incredibly important subject having, as I said, as I started out, a girl that grew up amongst four brothers with no sister in a time the periods weren't discussed, being very sporty girl. Um, I stuck it out. I stayed with sport all throughout my life. But I remember all the horror stories and all the times that I would have you know, had leaks and all the different things that happened and been embarrassed about it and being afraid the boys would see and all the different things. So we just kind of want to make sure that the next generation and for this current generation, it's different. And men in particular are particularly sympathetic and I find them brilliant when it comes to periods and so understanding and so, so supportive. So um, thank you so much for listening, listening to me. And now we go to any questions. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ellie. Uh, that was really, really interesting. Would you just unshare your screen there yeah. and then I'll, uh, there's a couple of questions come in um, for you there. So thanks everyone as well for putting the questions in the in the chat as we were going through. So um, a question. I hope you're here. not all traumatised um, now after that. <laughs> I think so. Uh, just a question in from Porik. Um, and he was asking around, is there um, a certain age that you'd suggest to have this conversation? with girls in a club um, 
in terms of kind of having that conversation with parents is, is a kind of an age that you would kind of expect well so again it goes back to the athlete kind of on front of you because some developmentally like they might be the, you know like I give the example that I I coach say some girls in basketball and they're around that kind of um 11 12 13 and you know I talk about uh you know blocking out with you know using your bum to block out and they all giggle and laugh you know and then that starts to get a bit more comfortable so the girls will usually start getting their periods you know from they can get as young as eight and that's just to give you a bit of a warning we are seeing it as young as eight and it's incredibly young but I would kind of start that conversation around the 10 year maybe 10 year mark and very much normalizing it you know but in all the different ways that we kind of discussed there but it, it, you have to kind of go by the athlete in front of you because some of them just developmentally like you know mightn't be particularly ready until they're even 13 but that's around the age they start to get their periods it's probably a good time to start having the conversation they will have should have heard it at school around fourth class that's kind of when the conversation starts they, they have the the talk so it's probably a good time to back it up around that time as well yeah no that's what a, a few of the comments come back are saying around that around that school age as well that it is introduced um around school as well um Lots of people saying great content as well and um, kind of a few people telling us what they do in their clubs. Some clubs do have those period bags and they have talked to their athletes about periods um, but maybe start to do it a little bit more often. Um, I like the one. Uh, so someone saying that their the first first experience of periods was taught, telling their 12-year-old that they were coming on this call this evening. So I think it's it's a kind of nice a nice conversation opener yeah well. exactly yeah um but I think for for me as I said this is part of a bigger a bigger conversation around around periods and I like your takeaway slide at the air the end there around just trying to I suppose normalize the conversation and be approachable be open and honest um and just to kind of I suppose finish on the the kind of period supportive stuff that we're that we're talking about in clubs so when we're looking at that pack if clubs don't have that pack yet what's a really simple thing that they can pull together and um, that they could start with even after this call they can go away and say right okay I want to bring this into the club what would you suggest yeah would be well, in that pack for them to to use yeah so like obviously something waterproof rucksack um and then putting in you know period underwear that's very important to be inclusive and it's very important for the young girls as well it's not because I do them but I know from working with you know so many that that is really important having the pads tampons of different absorbencies uh wipes um hand sanitizer and little bags to dispose of you know they, they might want to dispose of a pad or something and you might not necessarily have an access to sanitary bins where you train like some I know most people probably have good club facilities but I could think of one club that I'm very close by and they wouldn't have like facilities like it would be out in a you know with no access to bathrooms even so it can be kind of very mixed Perfect. but uh, we we do the packs pre-made if anybody if anyone goes oh god I don't I can't be dealing with that we have the meds specifically for our periods so uh, they have the inner pack as well that the girls can lift and go to a bathroom discreetly they don't have to bring the big rucksack with them but I was also saying to you try and you know encourage parents also to take on that responsibility as well like I mean it's not for clubs and coaches to sort this we have to do this in partnership with parents and send the girls prepared is part of that it's very easy to put the little kit together you know we do them in little small kits but they put them into the sports bag and it's not like they have to keep refilling them they're there for emergencies if something happens while they're away it's just very simple yeah and you you have those on your on your website as yeah. well uh, which, yeah we which do the details. um we will share the slide deck as well after this as well so it'll go out with the recording um so all that information will be on there for you as well as well as all the information from the slides um, so no, that's perfect. So there's no more questions come in there, but a lot of people saying it's been really great this evening. So thank you so much, Ellie, uh, for your time and for all the information that you've given. As Ellie said, she'll uh, all her contact details are on there, and you're happy to answer questions or if anyone wants anything to come at to all, you yeah, afterwards, absolutely. um, then that would be great. And the same for me as well. If anyone has any thing they want to bring uh, through the, the women in sports side and um, you all have my email address now I think as well um, and I can help support clubs in any way um, possible as well so uh, thank you very much for this evening um, and I'll send all this out for you in the next couple of days so thanks very much everyone and have a, a nice rest of your evening.